Hi. Today we're talking about how many kids it is reasonable to have when living in the city and how do we create a sustainable living situation for families in urban areas like New York. I just had my graduation day. I have given birth to one more child than it is reasonable to have in a city like New York. Yep, I have three kids. And there's my wonderful stepson. When he's here, that makes four. But that doesn't sound so crazy, right? And yet, if you live within the five boroughs of New York City, you know just how challenging it, it can be to do something like getting around the city by public transportation when you have small children. Hmm. Subways that don't have elevators or escalators, having to fold a stroller before you get on the bus, and that means carrying the stroller and the baby and dragging the rest of your kids, in rush hour on the train when there's overcrowding and no place for little people to sit, or there's the unreasonable cost of housing, overcrowded public schools, un unaffordable private schools. The standard here is two. Two is reasonable. Two is reasonable for a working mom to handle. And I say reasonable in quotation marks because there is nothing reasonable in the life of a working mom. And God knows how hard she works and how hard she tries. <sighs> Two is I don't want my first child to be alone, so I'm going to give him or her a sibling. But that's it. The buck stops there. Two is not needing more than a two bedroom apartment and being able to survive at home when your kids are there and not, while not having outdoor space for them to play in. Two is the number of arms I have so that I can hold on to my children when I leave the house so that they will not run out into traffic. I can keep them close or take off for me on a subway platform. So our family has officially graduated beyond what is reasonable. What now? What makes this reasonable what makes this unreasonableness reasonable? I'll tell you, there are a few things. Family, friends, community. Having two small children at home and a new baby and not having immediate family nearby to help out, once I was home with our newly minted bundle of joy, I quickly realized how over my head I was. So, when someone offered help, I learned to say yes. I learned to accept help. This is a pretty big deal. I've always had this attitude of not wanting to be a bother to anyone. My thinking was always that people generally don't want to be bothered. But when you surround yourself with like-minded, community-oriented people, you're not a bother at all. And in fact, you give those people joy by giving them the opportunity to help. Now, that's not to say that one should constantly demand and take advantage of people's kindness. But by being open to saying yes when help is offered opens us up to learning how to be a community again. God knows I've been working on this for a while. I've lived in many places where I didn't know my neighbors' names. But whenever I made the conscious decision to be open to the people around me, I've had the most pleasant connections. I don't know how it is in rural areas, if it's as easy to isolate oneself, but it's a very common problem in large cities where we live so close together, but couldn't be farther apart. Simply remembering to look a person in the eyes when you're passing them on the sidewalk and offering a warm smile can cheer the atmosphere in a neighborhood tremendously. When I was a single person living in the city, I would often see moms traveling the subway with their small children and without help, which is not simple. And I might see a mom standing at the bottom of, or top of a set of stairs preparing to lift a stroller and people passing them in a hurry, no one stopping to offer a hand. It was heartbreaking. As long as my hands were free, I would offer help. In fact, I would probably just carry the stroller up or down the stairs for them. So with this baby, when I was offered a cooked meal, I learned to say yes. In the end, I ended up with meals prepared and delivered for two weeks straight. 
When someone said, hey, can I come by and hang out with your kids while you rest for a couple of hours? I learned to say yes. They were so amazing. My dishes were washed, my laundry was done, and my kids were happy. That's just to name a couple of ways in which help was offered and received. All I had to do was be willing to accept the help and let people in. I can't wait for the opportunity to take all the love my family received and pay it forward. To build this tangible community in what oftentimes seems a distant, unfeeling, concrete jungle, I can't expect other people to do it. It has to start with me. There's no other way. My part in this system can only be fulfilled by me. I can't escape playing my part in creating that better world we all dream of living in. I asked a question at the beginning of the video. How do we create a sustainable living situation for families in urban areas like New York City? Let's continue this conversation and bring your suggestions in the comments below. I believe that we really can start doing our part in making these ideas a reality. What makes this unreasonableness reasonable? Family, friends, community. Let's do it together. Until next.